Today, I wanna to show you the five things I wish I knew about chainsaw milling before I got started. As you can see, this entire barn behind me, I made out of chainsaw milled lumber over the last year. These are things that you're not gonna learn in a chainsaw milling tutorial. Let's go. Number one is the power head. You need a really big power head to mill chainsaw lumber. I prefer uh, MS661, which I would recommend using no less than a 90cc class saw, especially if you're gonna mill hardwoods, oak, ash, hickory, cherry, etc. cetera. Um, you're gonna need a really big power head to pull through those cuts, especially if you're gonna mill you know, 36 inches wide, big rips one after another. If you're milling softwoods like spruce, pine, uh, tulip poplar, etc., those cuts can actually be about twice as fast. So you could probably get away with a smaller power head like a 70cc class saw, uh, that'd be a steel 461, 462, maybe even a smaller saw than that, like a 50cc class um, farm boss, um, something like that. With small softwood lumber, you could probably get away with it. However, chainsaws are air-cooled engines. So for any size saw, I would recommend letting it warm up and cool down before each cut. So I like to let my saw idle for about one minute before I start cutting. Once I finish a cut, I'll let it cool down the same way. Just let it idle for about one minute. The reason for that is it'll allow your engine to cool down and warm up properly as opposed to just making rip after rip after rip. So I have a friend who manages a chainsaw repair shop and he hates chainsaw mills because he says, guys are constantly burning out their saws. They'll bring in these chainsaws that they think they can just rip, rip after rip after rip all day long. And in reality, these are small engines that are not really made for this. So if you're gonna mill with a chainsaw, you have to take care of your saw, let it warm up and cool down. But number two is cost. If you think that you can mill chainsaw lumber, you, you see a, a mill for 200 bucks online. Um, in reality, it's quite more than that. Um, to buy a chainsaw that is capable of chainsaw milling, you're gonna need to pay a lot more than that. Uh, the 661 is about $1,700. Um, I know there are clones and other alternative saws. I don't have any experience with the Holzforma, Farmer Tech, uh, the blue saws, but if you do, let me know in the comments what your experience with that is. Uh, I don't have any experience with those saws. Other costs, you're gonna need a respirator, being that when you're milling, you have your face directly in the exhaust of the chainsaw the entire cut. So you don't wanna be breathing in those fumes cut after cut. A respirator is typically about $50, and it's definitely worth the investment. You need uh, chains for your chainsaw. I would recommend using a milling chain, which later in this video, I'll show you how to make a milling chain out of a standard firewood cross-cut chain. You're also gonna need a flat surface of some kind to make your first cut. Now, I use a ladder for that. I know that there are other tools to use, like the uh, Granberg Easy Rails, which are uh, about $200. You can use those, I, I don't, uh, I don't have any experience with the easy rails, but if you like them and you've had a good experience, uh, I'm curious to know how that works out for you. So altogether, if you're making less than $2,500 worth of lumber, a chainsaw mill might not be a good investment. Now, if you just wanna make lumber for fun and have your own lumber and have the, the satisfaction that you're making your own lumber to build a project with, then all the power to you. Uh, that's great. But from an investment perspective, if you're gonna use less than $2,500 worth of lumber, it's probably more worth your time and money just to go buy your lumber. Now, this barn that I built, I weighed out my cost of what it would cost to buy all this lumber, and it was higher than $2,500. So. For that reason, I decided that a chainsaw mill was a good option. I also have a lot of access to high quality timber that I can fell, cut, buck, mill myself. So it was a good alternative to lowering cost for this pole barn. Also keep in mind that you can get a low end bandsaw mill for 
about that same cost. So $2,500. Now the advantage of a chainsaw mill is that it's also a chainsaw. So if you need to fell a giant tree, you also have a giant chainsaw, which is great. Uh, bandsaw mill won't do that. So uh, another thing to consider. My third point is the first cut. So the general rule of thumb with chainsaw milling is you should measure twice, cut once. And what I mean by that is your all of your lumber after your first cut will be based off of the exactness of cut number one. So make sure that you take your time when setting up the first cut. Make the first cut so it doesn't have a twist in it, it doesn't have a dip in it, and then the rest of your lumber will be cleaned. The way I like to set up my first cut is by plunge cutting through the face of the log twice. So that way I can get through a piece of half inch metal bar stock. Then I put a piece of rebar through the bottom rung of the ladder. Lastly, I tie together the bar stock and the rebar using light gauge rope. The advantage of using this method is that you can slide the ladder to extend so you can make the cut as long as you want. This is actually how I made the longest board ever made on YouTube, which was originally 57 foot 6 inches. My fourth point is that chainsaw lumber has a reputation for being low quality lumber. That is not true. If you take your time and measure twice to cut once, you can make beautiful lumber with a chainsaw especially if you're using a proper milling chain that doesn't leave a nasty kerf on it. You can mill with a cross cut chain that has a you know, 30, 35 degree angle on the teeth, but you're gonna get uglier looking lumber that has more uh, of a, a heavy kerf to it. I like to make my milling chains to 10 degrees. So this is a milling chain that incorporates two scoring teeth. I just removed the red portion with an angle grinder to make the teeth half as thick. Then are two clearing teeth, which are all filed to 10 degrees, made from a standard cross-cut firewood chain. Also, I would recommend making your lumber dimensional as opposed to nominal. Now, if you're not familiar with this term, the chart on the left here describes this. So the advantage of milling dimensional is that all of your rafter hangers, post stands, etc. are all made for dimensional sized lumber. You'd be hard pressed to find these for anything that's nominal. My last point, number five, is that keep in mind chainsaw milling is a slow and tedious process. If you think that it's going to be quick and you want to make a ton of lumber rapidly, then buy a bandsaw mill. Chainsaw milling is slow, being that you've got a pretty heavy kerf that you pull through the log as opposed to a bandsaw mill, which has a tiny little kerf. Like for instance, uh, a 661 is only seven some horsepower. so half the horsepower of a bandsaw mill with twice as big of a kerf, that's gonna result in a much slower cut. The chainsaw mill can be a great option if you have time. It can be a great way to make beautiful lumber at a very low cost. You just need to get past that first upfront cost and then after that you can make very low cost lumber for a very long time.